Of uh, Russia's 2024 bridge uh, 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 presidency, we all understand we'll focus on primarily on using local currencies like your dairy layer, highlighted uh, and payment systems. Now, what more should we be expecting uh, in the coming years? Well, I think it's going to be a new dynamic. It's a much more expanded BRICS. It's uh, expanded uh, more than 100% uh, of its current size, moving from 5 to 11. And uh, as I've said, each of these countries bring in a new richness uh, and a new experience, and uh, they will add value to BRICS in all of the key areas of cooperation. For example, we have the energy research platform that looks at uh, energy, including uh, looking at green energy, cooperation in technologies, and uh, a number of the new member states like Saudi Arabia, uh, like the UAE, are very rich in this area of uh, energy cooperation. So I believe that can that will become a very dynamic area of, of, of cooperation. Uh, UAE is, and Saudi Arabia also highly advanced in terms of new technologies. Likewise, uh, the Argentina in terms of agriculture, Egypt and, and Ethiopia bring in their own uh, set of, of experience and expertise in a number of sectors uh, that, that will enrich the, the BRICS process. So as of January, you're going to have a far more bigger meeting uh, coming together of the BRICS family. And I believe that the cooperation will intensify and uh, the, the scope of cooperation will also become wider in terms of new areas of, of uh, cooperation that new member states will bring onto the table. And of course, also addressing some of the core challenges that we face around peace and security, around conflict uh, uh, prevention, conflict resolution. Uh, a number of, of uh, countries have challenges, but BRICS provide that common platform where we can all speak to other, each other in a very robust, open manner and try to find solutions to some of these challenges. Not long ago, as you know, uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran had their own tensions, but with the uh, intervention of China, supported by the regional players, there was rapprochement between these countries, and that has had a positive impact on the whole Middle East situation. They have exchanged ambassadors recently. They have exchanged high-level visits. And I think having all of these key Western Asian countries within BRICS also brings a new dimension into the BRICS family. It's a new region that was not represented uh, within the BRICS uh, family, so I think Having their presence there is going to be of much value. Having a stronger African presence, three African countries now being part of the 11 in BRICS, I think that also amplifies the African presence, the African voice, and champions also uh, the African development uh, issues uh, jointly by all three of us. I think uh, that gives greater opportunity to Africa uh, in partnership with the BRICS members. Mm. Now, uh, let's talk about the host country. We understand the challenges uh, South Africa faced. We run up to the summit, and the summit displayed South Africa's contradictory foreign policy. What can you say about that? Well, the summit had its own challenges, which was complicated, uh, unfortunately, by the uh, warrant of arrest uh, issued. Uh, by the International Criminal Court against uh, President Putin after we had formally invited him to attend the summit in person. It, as you know, it posed a challenge for South Africa because we are party to the Rome Statute and uh, we have obligations under, under the Rome Statute in terms of uh, our treaty obligations. And as a responsible member of the international community, we uphold uh, the agreements we sign up to. So, of course, uh, President Ramaphosa appointed a, a high-level committee under the chairship of our deputy president, supported by cabinet ministers, to look into the question of the challenge that the ICC ruling uh, posed to South Africa hosting a successful summit with the participation of uh, President Putin. Uh, and I must say that I think uh, President Ramaphosa also lies very closely, not just with, with the President Putin, 
but all BRICS leaders, he had several rounds of discussion, some in person, some telephonically, with all of the BRICS leaders, because this was not just a challenge for South Africa and Russia. This was a, was a challenge for the entire BRICS family. And I think it demonstrated this solidarity of cooperation and the willingness to find solutions to challenges within BRICS. And in the end, having considered all issues, it was then decided that President Putin will participate virtually in the summit, which he did in every session. The leaders met, he participated fully, virtually, to avoid putting South Africa in a difficult position had he attended in person. And I think that was, a, as what was described by many uh, leaders, a masterstroke in diplomacy on the part of President Ramaphosa in terms of how he handled this situation in a very mature, uh, inclusive manner and found a resolution to it without negatively impacting the holding of the summit and also to ensure that we had a successful summit with the full participation of President Putin uh, virtually. And, and I think, of course, there were other pressures put on South Africa around our position on the Russia-Ukraine situation. As you know, uh, certain countries of the global north uh, were not satisfied with South Africa's strategic neutrality, that we uh, non-aligned position that we adopted, that our view has always been that the war will not have any winners. There'll only be losers in, in a war situation. There is no uh, winner in any conflict situation. And the only way to resolve it which is what South Africa has been championing from the very outset, is for the parties to speak to each other under the auspices of the United Nations to find a diplomatic solution through discussions amongst all the parties, addressing comprehensively the concerns of all sides. And that is our position. We have not deviated from it, despite the pressure being put on South Africa, despite false allegations being uh, made against South Africa as being uh, as supplying uh, weapons uh, to the Russians. There were no uh, there were no truth to any of these allegations. And again, our president put a process in place to demonstrate that South Africa does not deal in a dishonest manner in its dealings with the global community. We're very open, we're very transparent, and we are a responsible member of the international community and we have proven that and i think that is why we were able to despite all of these pressures weather that and had a highly successful the most successful and the largest ever BRIC summit in the past 15 years since leaders have been meeting uh, at summit format